All right, now we're going to go ahead and uh, yank the flywheel. We've, uh, we've co-opted uh, James here. We we'll never know when you walk by the, uh, the diabolical garage here when we might need some help, so we appreciate it. And he's uh, locking the flywheel in place for us. I'm sure that uh, BMW Mini has a, has a special tool for that, and uh, I think we're going to need it on reassembly. 16 millimeter. We've been using these a lot on this car. They don't come in most of your socket sets, so it's probably going to be a good idea if you get one. We're going to do the thing like we did with the uh, with the uh, pressure plate. I'm just going to go ahead and take some of these off so that we don't end up uh, with the flywheel falling off in our in our hands. They don't appear to be too long of a bolt, but again, they're, they may have used a thread locker when they put these in. We'll have to check the specs, as well as, again, we printed out the, uh, the torque specs when these go back. And we're just going to go ahead and start to, and I do see thread locker on there, so that's what you see here on the bottom part of the thread, a Loctite or a thread sealant uh, that'll really lock those in when you torque them out. And won't allow them to back out, exactly. So this one we can... Yeah, it felt like they had, they had a thread locker on there. And we got one more. And we should have a, should have a flywheel that is off and uh, voila there is our uh, there's our flywheel that again we're not sure if we're going to be able to uh, uh, lighten that very much we may those uh, the teeth that you see on there which were up in the starter motor are of no use to us in our last project in the uh, in the 57 speedster we were able to lighten our flywheel by a, a few more pounds and uh, we removed all of the uh, all of that material pretty much above the bolts and the teeth that would have been there uh, that the starter needs. So we'll see what our uh, BMW Mini experts say in terms of how far we can lighten this flywheel. Remember, you may have seen this bracket a couple times from different angles under the car. Uh, we had to release at one point the um, the carrier tube for the uh, drive shaft. Uh, this axle, this also held the, uh, the bottom mount for this, for the, uh, uh, for the engine. And now we're going to go ahead and take this bracket off because we're going to have to use this again or figure out a way that we're going to be able to uh, fabricate something that will be able to hold our motor, also support our, uh, our, drive, bar, our drive shaft bracket. 13 millimeter, uh, nothing really to it here. This looks like we're just going to... Pop off three bolts. And uh, that will take care of all of this. And like I said, we'll, it looks like, well, maybe four bolts, excuse me. Probably a little longer than you expect. We'll leave it hang from that top one and then we'll pull that off. So this will be an interesting part of the project. This is probably going to be some fairly significant fabrication here. Is that axle tube is going to have to be is going to have to be supported in pretty much the, the position that it was originally. And there you go. There All right. Today we're going to remove the upper engine mount and this is a uh, this is a two-piece mount so we're going to take the top off first this is a 13 millimeter uh, socket here I'm just going to go ahead and loosen those get them all loose and we'll spin them off here there's also a uh, after we get this off there's a lower mount uh, that actually attaches to the engine so this part attaches to the mount and then the mount attaches to the engine so we've got another four 
uh, bolts that we'll have to deal with here after we get this out. And this actually gives us access to a couple of them. Those are long, long little guys, so. Again, probably we're working with long bolts with, with fine threads here. We'll just keep spinning them off. That one looks good. And it looks like the train's coming by. Must be the cannonball coming by here in Petticoat Junction. And we'll get these. This is where our mounting point, where our attachment point, if you remember from the uh, from when we took the this engine and transmission out. And these are kind of long bolts here. We got some work to do. But that was where our uh, where our S hook went through, and we hooked it up to the uh, cherry picker. So as you can see, some serious uh, serious bolts here that uh, are holding this mount together. That one, and we've got one more here. And there we go. So there's our, there's the top of our uh, engine mount. Now we're going to get a, uh, a Torx socket and uh, external Torx socket, a number 12, which uh, is kind of the equivalent of a 10 millimeter, but it's not. It's got the, um, it's got the serrated edges on it, and that's what we've been using all along. So we're going to release these, and that always works real nice to have the proper tools and those Torx uh, bolts are definitely what you want as a Torx socket to take these out. So we'll take out two, two more, we'll leave the top ones hanging. That way things don't come crashing down, so always a good habit to have, even with something that's relatively light, is to uh, support the top at least at one position so the parts don't come flying again, especially if they're heavy. This isn't critical at all, but if they're heavy, it can be. And there's one, there's the other, there's our Torx bolt, and there is the part of the mount that uh, bolted directly to the engine. We're going to try and reuse all of this, or whatever we can, uh, with our electric motor. So we're going to devise uh, a system that should uh, really uh, hold that motor up to the right side of the car, to the passenger side of the car. Uh, the transmission side, we're using the same stock uh, transmission mounts because we're using the same transmission. Well, Brain, this is looking like we're getting to the fun part here now. Uh, great job. I see we are missing that nasty old engine and have a lot of room in here. What can you tell me about it? Well, it's gone. We've yanked the, uh, the transmission, the ice engine, we got all our wiring, the, the, the heater cables, fuel cables, all kinds of stuff that we will need and won't need. Um, we've left our prior, our previous engine transmission mounts, uh, the three main ones, in place. And we'll have to start working with all that. Now, this was the uh, transmission mount. How did that go on there? It was. This came in from underneath. And, uh, and bolt it up and it basically hung on there. Okay, so we're going to reuse that. Yes. I guess this is our uh, electric variable steering. That is. Wow, what a system. That looks great. I like it. We can get in there and see what's going on now. We had a uh, brace for the drive shaft that hooked up to this and mounted to the engine. Yes. We got to get that off and uh, put it back on here and engineer some sort of a system to hold that in the position the engine held it in. And that's going to take a little bit of engineering. That will. But now we're to the fun part. This is uh, where I like to play. Uh, I uh, kind of left you and Kurt to do the uh, nasty work of uh, pulling all the front end of that off and getting the engine out. But now that it's fun again, I'll come back and come help back you. And play with us, huh? Right. All right. The uh, <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> this is the fun part. So this is our Getrag six-speed transmission, 
Here's some components we, uh, Brian and Kurt pulled out of there. This is our clutch and pressure plate. Right here would be the throwout bearing on that. And our uh, pressure plate fits right there. Our clutch then goes over this uh, shaft somehow. And that all fits together. And this is our flywheel. Mm -hmm. A heavy devil that goes over that and mates there. And that's essentially how we transmit power to the transmission with the regular internal combustion engine. We're gonna take this fly